What's up y'all, it's Shuffle, and it's been a while since we've done a Darkest Dungeon 1 analytical video, and we're going to do one of those today. This video is going to be talking about The Collector, and I got this idea from a recent Reddit thread that I read and I put it on YouTube, so if you haven't seen me react to it, then it's there for you. But this person that was react or not reacting, I was reacting, but this person that was talking about Collector said how much they hate Collector, and it reminded me of back when I started playing, and I lost to the Collector a couple times, you know, especially early on. Like, he beat me the first, like, four or five times I fought him, I'm pretty sure. And it really made me reflect on what a good enemy Collector is. That might be surprising to you, or it might not, I don't know. But that is what we're going to talk about today. As always, though, before we get into the thick of things, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, leave your thoughts down below in the comments, and make sure to check out the cool box, or the, the description box, for all the cool links, like Discord, Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon, if you want to support the channel. Thank you very much, but we are going to talk about Collector as I said, and we have a few different main points to hit, specifically three, but kind of like a fourth in there as well. But the things I do want to cover specifically are that the Collector is a great teaching tool for new players. It may not seem like it at first, but he does teach you how to play the game and how to team build, which is very important. It may not have even been the intended design of Red Hook, but that's just kind of how Collector falls into place. And then we're also going to talk about the strategies that can beat Collector, so I guess kind of a how-to in the middle of all the things that we're doing in this video. And then finally we're going to talk about the fact that it's a wandering boss and that it's rewarding. So I guess those kind of things just go like together, even though I have those like points three and four. The first point I need to talk about is that Collector is a great teaching tool. So what I mean is that Collector teaches you a few things about how the game works in terms of battles, because it's a little more high stakes when you fight Collector, he can do a lot of damage quickly, so you have to understand some of the mechanics and also specifically how to team build, which kind of goes into the other point about multiple strategies being viable, but Collector is one of the biggest punishers in the game for not having a well-built team. Like the bosses and stuff, the main region bosses, usually have some sort of gimmick that you can kind of play around or play into in order to make it very, very easy in a lot of ways. But Collector is more of just a, do you have a decent grasp of just general game knowledge? And then can you make an effective team? Those are the things you need to be Collector. It's not like some of the other bosses where, for instance, the first boss in the Warrens, the, uh, the Swine Prince, you know, you can do some cheeky stuff like using guards, or Aegis, or Sandstorm, and Suffer, and things like that. There are a lot of counters, but they're very niche. Whereas Collector, you really just need to have a well-built team. The reason I say you need a well-built team is because when you're fighting Collector, he loses to a few things, which is what we'll talk about later with the viable strategies part of the video. But out of the multiple ways that you can beat this boss, your team needs to have some form of them like it has to have a couple of these things in order for you to win otherwise you're going to struggle so it's helpful if your team has things like control so either stuns in order to stun the ads or stun collector at the start of the fight it has to have reach that is very important it either needs reach or very heavy frontline damage so you just have two different ways to get through the fight primarily and then you need some form of consistent damage output and then finally you need a way to sustain or stay alive in the fight because sometimes it can drag on a little bit so if you've noticed the things that we've talked about kind of all just go into most primarily strong teams of Darkest Dungeon if you're familiar with the game. So we're talking about control, so usually stuns are pretty good or disrupting effects like moving. Those things help a lot. And then we have damage, so reach or a way to get through the front line very quickly. Consistent damage, dependable damage is very helpful. Again, every team needs this. And then finally, a way to survive either by stalling in the fight or cheating out some heals as you're going through other encounters, or maybe even camping. Camping is a great way to recover as well. So if your team is cohesive enough, it can accomplish all of these things. The reason you want control is because Collector has the adds, obviously, the heads that he summons. The Collected Highwayman can do some pretty dang good damage. The other two can be disruptive or just annoying, like the Men-at-Arms can guard certain targets, not just Collector, can also guard the Highwaymen sometimes. And then Vestal can heal on top of Lifesteal from Collector. So you have to be able to control the other heads either by killing them quickly or stunning them. And then you also have to be able to keep consistent damage on Collector at the same time. So your team has asked a lot of questions. So this is what I mean by it's a great teaching tool. Because for me personally, I know that I went from just losing to Collector like the first four times I fought him because I just didn't know what I was doing 
to now pretty much every team I make, I never build it thinking, can this beat Collector? It's more that just I'm so familiar with the characters and stuff that when I make teams, they check all the boxes. Like I know everything I need to have a successful team. And so whenever Collector shows up, it's usually pretty manageable. And no, I'm not trying to flex because I know that just in like my Twitch chat and stuff when I'm streaming the game, people have gone from like, you know, saying they hate the Collector and he's a douche and they can't beat him or whatever to some people just say like free loot whenever they see him. It's like, oh, hey, it's a free trap gem. The second point I was touching on is that multiple strategies win against Collector. You can have a heavy control team, so if you have a multitude of stuns, like the ability to stun three units at a time, usually something like Plague Doctor with Blinding Gas, or Yop, or just having like Hands from the Abyss, or stuff like Vestal with Dazzling Light, for instance, that's another good one. There are a lot of ways to control the fight, so as long as you can keep things stunned and locked down, and then you have consistent damage, you can win this fight pretty easily, so if you stun, the enemies every other turn, they're only getting half the turns that they can compared to all of your turns. It doesn't matter if Collector heals for 18 because he gets stunned every other turn and he takes like 40 damage, for instance, or at least a champion. And so you can get through the fight pretty quickly. I think some of the fastest kills you'll ever see on Collector outside of Merc teams are teams that can stun him in rank 1 on turn 1. So this helps if you get a surprise, for instance, and then you have something like Hands from the Abyss, or Blackjack, or Yop, or... I can't really say Stunning Blow unless you get a surprise because Crusader is very slow, but usually if you can stun Collector on turn one and you have access to some pretty good frontline damage, you can blow him up pretty quickly. Control doesn't just take the form of stuns as well, like if you have stuff such as Guard from Man in Arms or even Hound Master if you really want to, you can help to control the damage coming out in the fight and direct it to the correct people. Another strategy that Collector is very vulnerable to are Mark strategies. So Mark. I, I've talked about it in the past, I've kind of reversed my opinion, my early opinion I should say, where I didn't really like it, but now I do see the value of Mark. And Mark as a strategy is very good at killing bosses and mini bosses. Specifically ones that don't have multiple actions, just because that way they don't shed the Mark as quickly. Although you can still use Mark on multi-action bosses, don't get it twisted, but it is more turn efficient to be able to use it on single action enemies, which Collector is. So if you have a Mark team and you can get Mark on him early, which shouldn't be hard as long as it doesn't miss because Marks can't be resisted, and then Collector spends his first turn summoning all the heads and then running to the back of the party, that's usually in range of most of the Mark Synergy characters except for Bounty Hunter. But if you have that going on, Arbalest can just plug away at him and hopefully get some crits and take him down pretty quick by yourself usually. Other than that, the list really does go on. Those are like two big archetypes for fighting Collector, but as I was alluding to before, if you have a team with just heavy frontline damage that kills the adds very quickly in like two hits, and then you do some damage on Collector afterwards, you can win with that as long as your team has enough sustain. So what you do in that situation is kill the Collected Highwayman first, just so that way the damage coming at you is a bit less. Then you put all the rest of the damage the team has at Collector. Of course, I probably should have put this in at some point earlier, but understanding how Collector works as a fight does help. So I'm not going to go through like every single mechanic Collector does. The most important one is that obviously on turn one, the first thing Collector does is collect call. That's to summon the ads and get the fight starting. This also gets you a free turn to set up if you need to. And then the next main mechanic that you have to be worried about with collect call is that even though he can still summon when he's down a head or two, it's not usually a high chance. But if he has no collected highwaymen, so if there are no Dismas heads floating on the collector side of the field, he will collect call next turn. So this way, the AI is programmed to make sure that collector always has his big source of damage up on his side of the field. So if you really want to buy yourself a turn, just kill the highwayman, and if he doesn't have another one up, he will summon next turn. The final point to talk about is that collector is a wandering boss, so he can appear anywhere, which is kind of cool. The game only has a couple wandering bosses, and honestly, the fanatic and thing from the stars are not cool and not fun, so the fact that Collector exists as someone chill, that's cool to fight, that's nice. So Collector can appear in any zone as long as your inventory is full enough. The chance to spawn Collector is three, four, or five percent, depending on the difficulty. So at Apprentice it's three, Veteran it's four, and Champion it's five. And also the other factor is that your inventory has to be over 79% full, so 80% or more which is translating to 13 slots. So if your inventory has 13 things worth of stuff in it, then Collector has that percentage chance to spawn in a hallway fight. So thank you to the Darkest Dungeon Wiki for that info. It also goes without saying that Collector cannot spawn in rooms. 
If you are able to best the collector, you are rewarded with one of the heads from the enemies that he spawns. So the collected highwayman, man at arms, and vessels all drop their specific heads with their cannon names. These trinkets can be pretty nice to get in Apprentice, especially because they are pretty powerful for that early in the game. So collector showing up is never really a bad thing because he can drop you some good trinkets if you don't have them yet. And then every time after that, he will drop the puzzling trapezahedra guy fieri gem. And that is pretty good because it sells for 3,500 gold and everyone likes gold. Overall, the more time passes, the more I enjoy collector as a boss. I think I put him in like B tier on my boss tier list a while back, but honestly, he deserves at least A. And it's not so much just because of how the fight plays out. It's a pretty good teaching tool, as I've been saying in the video. It teaches you how to team build. It teaches you how to prioritize damage. It teaches you really to look at what the enemy can do and then also let you, or I should say force you to consider those things and then work around that where some enemy comps in the game are actually quite a few of them. As long as you kill something early on and get the turn advantage, then you're usually in pretty good shape and depending on what your team is capable of, usually some enemies are better than others. So you can really just get through them without paying attention too much. But collectors specifically, you really have to think about like, can I take this damage from Collected Highwayman this turn? What if Collector uses Lifesteal and then the Vessel heals him? You know, and that's like 50 something HP at Champion. So like, or not, that's if it crits, excuse me. But you know what I'm saying, right? It can be a lot of HP if they do it back to back. So you have to consider those things. You have to consider if Man at Arms guards or whoever he's guarding. Plus the other good part about the way he summons the, the heads is that since he summons Man at Arms, Vestal and Highwayman, these are things familiar to the player as well. They're not foreign entities like the first time you go into the Warrens and you don't know what all the pigs do. When you fight the Collector, you've probably, you've definitely seen Highwayman and Vessel at this point in the game. Like even if it happens week two, the player has seen those two characters. And then Man at Arms, even if you haven't seen him, you know he tells you what he does pretty quickly. But chances are you probably have seen Man at Arms by the time you fight your first Collector, so you understand that that dude's a tank. So when Collector shows up and you fight him it summons the quote-unquote holy trinity of tank healer and dps against you while collector kind of does a bunch of stuff and you're familiar with it and it's easy to learn from anyway that's gonna do it for this one so as i said collector very cool teaches you how to play kind of fun and has good rewards so if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up let me know what you're thinking down below thanks for watching and for videos coming up in the future i know the next big darkest dungeon project i'm going to work on is the occultist guide for darkest dungeon one i forgot the darkest dungeon two is something i need to consider when i talk about future videos but that is what is happening i don't know when that's going to be done i have not started it yet but i will look into getting it started in the foreseeable future that's the best i can give you anyway thanks for watching and i'll see you next time